Good Rising family. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who was wisdom, who was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray that the Most High blesses this lesson today and gives our knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to get a much better understanding of the events that are currently happening on the earth so that we may get a much better understanding of the events that are soon to come on the earth. Coming today to uh, show how this society, this kingdom, is working very um, diligently over time to uh, stifle the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is calling her children home. She has been sent to awaken her people, the called out ones, <clears throat> the true church. And I'm going to show you today how the society, you know, the ones of the devil are working to stifle the Holy Spirit. But with that stifling, brings um, destruction. When uh, in Egypt, when uh, Moses was sent to uh, tell the Pharaoh to let my people go, he was stifling the plans of the Most High. And the Most High uh, used Moses as, an, uh, as his tool or his instrument to um, display his power and display the power of the true people of the Most High. We have to understand that those conditions, because we know that we are in Egypt again, and um, we knew that that's what we we're going to be going again, must be reset. Those conditions where the Holy Spirit is now calling for her children to be let go, to be allowed to return back home you know, first spiritually through understanding and then the physical um, deliverance of the people because we've gone so long without knowing who we are, not knowing where our records were, um, <clears throat> not understanding how to worship the Most High, that we had, to, we still are having, we're in the process of learning how to follow the Most High. The Most High is trying to deliver our books and our records back to us. And um, the adversary is working feverishly to keep us from um, attaining those records. First, uh, they use the churches. Now they're using people that look just like us to still push church doctrine. Church doctrine is these 80 books and none else. These 66 books and nothing else. These books are the inerrant Word of God. That is church doctrine. That is Catholic church doctrine all the way down. And that doctrine of that church doctrine has permeated the Hebrew Israelite walk or awakening as well. Now the Holy Spirit has been sent to uh, awaken us and to break away from church doctrine. Church doctrine of 80 books only or 66 books only. That church doctrine is being destroyed. So now that the Holy Spirit is destroying that, the Holy Spirit is awakening her people to the truth. The adversary is now working other cunning ways to try to stifle the Holy Spirit. As I've said in the last couple of videos, the battle lines have been drawn. Either you're working to uh, follow the Holy Spirit as she um, reveals new and deep information, as she reveals the meat that is now to come out, or you're working for the adversary and you're working to stifle the Holy Spirit and keep church doctrine going. As they work to uh, stifle the Holy Spirit, the adversary and the people that are joined unto her <clears throat> or him, the adversary, um, let me say Babylon, 
they are now opening themselves up to the curses. The curses that were on us will go on the adversary and the ones joined to the adversary. By their attempts to stifle the Holy Spirit, they open themselves up for curses. We did the same thing. When the Holy Spirit was sent to us through prophets in the past, we rejected those prophets. And what came by trying by rejecting the Holy Spirit and trying to stifle the Holy Spirit when she was sent to us in times of old, we were destroyed. We were, our nations were, were destroyed. Our kingdoms were destroyed. Our knowledge was destroyed. We were taken into captivity. That's why you cannot stifle or reject the Holy Spirit when she is coming, when she is sent. When she is sent, we must um, receive her and follow her lead. So it says, so that Israel, our nation, is an example to the whole world of what happens when you reject the Holy Spirit. Destruction is on its way. It happened to us. And if people are serious about wanting to uh, follow the Most High, as she is sending us information, you must learn to accept this information. Unlearn what you have learned and follow her wherever she, wherever she takes you. Let me show you how this is all shall be written in the scriptures. Go to Jeremiah 16 and 16. This is what's going on right now. Behold, I will send many fishers, saith the Most High, and they shall fish them. And that's exactly what we are doing right now. The Most High has sent fishers. The Most High has sent fishers to uh, break you away from that church doctrine of 80 books, 66 books only, only listening to your pastor, only listening to your priest, falling in line, falling in order, and not studying. But now that um, the people are working to um, stifle the Holy Spirit, now they're opening themselves up for the rest of this verse. It says, and after, you know, so when the fishing is done, this is what's going to happen after. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rock. So as uh, the adversary looks to stifle the Holy Spirit and this awakening with those actions, he brings upon himself the next chapter. So it's to go from, from fishermen to hunters. Same thing as when um, Pharaoh was told to let my people go and he refused to do so. Right now as the Most High is now sending his, uh, his people, the Holy Spirit, so they can realize that all these other scriptures, all these other uh, writings are ours as well. We're a much greater people than um <clears throat> than we ever thought and that our fall was monumentous because of our sins and now the most high is turning his face back to us and sending us the holy spirit to uh bring us back home now like i said the world is working to keep this uh, this awakening from happening or from accelerating but it's already too late it's already accelerating because whatever the Most High says is going to happen, that's what's going to happen. There's no way to stop it. They can try to hide it, which is what I'm going to show you in a little bit about what they were trying to do. They're trying to hide what's going on. They're trying to hide the awakening and trying to minimize what is really happening. But we know, we just feel it in our spirit, that uh, this uh, awakening is accelerating and taking off. We know that YouTube has new guidelines coming up on um, December the 10th. You know, I've already started, I've already started a, a Patreon page and a few people have already gone over there and, um, and joined. If something happens to this channel, that's where we will continue our work over there. So if you want to just go ahead and start to look and find the page so you already know where it's at. So if something happens to this page, um, we'll just continue the work over there. We know that wherever we go, we're going to be blessed. 
because we are in the will of the Most High. As long as we are continuing to follow the will of the Most High, he will bless us and he will guide us and give us the direction that we need. As these other nations now are working to uh, even more so out in the open to try to suppress this awakening, like I said, they're just opening themselves up for this more destruction. And that's what's written all over the scriptures, not only in the Bible, but also in the Book of More. We're going to take a look at that as well. The sign of the end or the sign of the end of the age is the awakening of the Most High's chosen people. They're returning to their knowledge, understanding of their father. And then there's more understanding that is coming as well. And that's what we're going to be getting into that very soon in other videos. And the other nations, the ones in the know, know exactly what is happening. And they're trying to keep it so that the other people do not realize what's happening. So they continue to be that frog in that, in that pot. And as the water gets hotter and hotter, they don't, have, they don't think about jumping out of that pot. They just burn to death because they don't realize what's happening all around them. So again, let's read this, Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And that's exactly what you're seeing right now. And it's going, like I said, it's just, it's growing exponentially. And they know that they can't stop it. So all they can do is work to hide it. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. Let me show you a little something here. Something that happened yesterday morning, kind of found, thought it was kind of odd. So, I mean, I kind of uh, had my phone on and whatever else, and it was showing the views at about 751 of the, of the uh, video I did uh, a couple days ago. It says, if you invalidate the Book of Mormon, I will use those exact same standards, you know, to permission validate the Bible. Um, this is what they're working to stifle. They're trying to stifle the fact that we're bringing the two sticks together. And they don't want people to realize that the Book of More and the Bible is the story of the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom. And that as we bring those two books together, among, uh, along with other books, we get more understanding. So, you know, I actually did this video really late in the, uh, at night and put it up. And um, so about eight hours after I put it up, it said it was about 3,300 views, somewhere around there. So, you know, a little bit later on, if you just refresh it, you know, I figured it'd probably be a couple hundred more views, two, 300 more views, whatever else, because this has been here kind of for a while. And um, <clears throat> so I just kind of updated it really quick just to kind of see where it was at. And check this out. It's at 51 right here. 3,300 plus views. 810. 2,400 views. So in the man in a matter of uh, 20, around 20 minutes, the video had dropped close to 900 to 1,000 views. So this would be your example of attempting to minimize the Holy Spirit and minimize what she's doing. Trying to make it seem as if this is not an, um, this might not be something that people want to look at. This might not be a topic that people want are interested in. So you go from, you know, this amount of views is 751. And then by 810, it's down almost 900 views. So we totally understand that they're manipulating the numbers. And we already know that. So it's not about the views or whatever else, but it's about the, um, the actions of trying to minimize what is happening and what is taking place. And the fact that um, they're doing things like this, hello, I thought we were, you know, Hebrew Israelites. We're minimized in the corner. We don't uh, know anything. Uh, we're not the uh, PhDs from the universities. Um, we're pretty much just a, a, a crazy bunch of people who, you know, take the Bible and, and rip up the scriptures and, and take everything out of context. 
Well, if that's what we are, and you really don't have anything to worry about, then why do something like this? Why minimize the amount of views that a video is getting? Why drop it over a thousand, almost a thousand views if, if no one's paying attention to it? And like I said, it's not about the views, it's just about the actions. And the actions show you that this movement is uh, gaining ground and gaining speed, and they don't want people to realize that. Now it starts to make much more sense as to the timing of, uh, of the things, of, you know, December the 10th and their new guidelines and things like that. But the thing is this. This is all part of prophecy. What you're seeing right now is prophecy. The Most High said that once the Most High awakens us and this movement begins to accelerate and we begin to produce good fruits once again, that the Most High was going to clear away the branches that are producing bad fruit. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to show you that, well, you know, yeah, these people over here, they, they don't know what they're talking about. They're unlearned. Um, don't pay any attention to them. No one wants to hear about, you know, the Book of Mormon and the Bible and anything like that. So we're going to make sure we just minimize all the views. That would be a private video you probably want to share with as many people as you possibly can because the ones they mess with are the ones that they don't want people to see. They don't want people to pay attention to. And it was just kind of amazing how we know we, we caught them and we got them doing these kinds of things right here. And we know that's exactly what's been going on, you know, trying to minimize what people are seeing, you know, what people think are important. You know, if you go to uh, Kanye West and one of his sermons at one of these churches on a Sunday, I'm sure it's got hundreds of thousands of views, millions of views, because they're trying to make it seem like what he's doing is, um, is the truth. And it's true for the masses. See, we're calling in anyone that the Most High is calling, Jews and Gentiles alike. If you are being drawn to this, if you're being drawn to this truth, you're welcome to come here and learn in order, in the way the order the Most High has set up. You know, I said, all we're doing is we're listening to the Holy Spirit. And she leads us into certain topics and certain things, and she gives the understanding. She has been sent to give that knowledge and understanding. So that's who I rely on. When I make up, when I'm giving lessons, things will just flow. I'll just be sitting there writing down notes, and then all of a sudden, all these thoughts and these things, uh, this matches with this, this goes with that. Uh, this book here, I remember reading that somewhere, and I know the Holy Spirit just guides me into all this different information. And then we bring it together and, and bring it to the nation. And I'm sure that's exactly how it was for our uh, forefathers as well. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, she leads us into everything that we need to know. There's no other way to get knowledge and understanding without her. Because there's so much information that has been hidden and contaminated um, that there's no way to be able to decipher what is real and what is not without her, without her being sent. So just to, you know, just so you can see, an example right there, just one more time. You know, you can see how they, 750 is right here. Just refresh it. And then by 810, it's right here. And what's happening right now, you know, yeah, I, I, I jack a lot of uh, memes and pictures and things like that from, um, <clears throat> from Instagram. So if you put up some good stuff, I'm definitely going to use it just so you guys know. Okay, so from Lisa Naft Naftali right here. says, I will put my Ruach within you. And that's exactly what's happening right now. The Most High is putting his Holy Spirit in us. He's guiding us back to him. And now the adversary is attempting to stop that. Let's read that really quick. Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Let me go there real quick. And of course, my phone is now. There it is. Ezekiel 36 and 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye, just continue 28, and ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your forefathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your power. 
I will also save you, this is 29, from all your uncleannesses. And I will call, uh, I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. And that's exactly, we've had a famine among the heathen. Heathen, We've been at the bottom. We've been having a famine of the word, a famine of understanding, a famine of justice, a famine of understanding who we are and who the others are. And the Most High is now working to put the spirit, the Ruach, back into us in order to guide us and to lead us back to him. And as you can see now, the uh, adversary is working feverishly, you know, and all night, all day, 24-7 to keep us from going back to our power. He's working to keep us like this, without the Holy Spirit, without the Ruach, empty vessels. That's what he's had us like for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that's what he's working so hard to keep us as, just like this. And many of us will stay just like that. But if you get the spirit and she's leading you back into this knowledge and understanding, it would behoove you to uh, listen to her and start to follow the true teachings that she has already, um, you know, been giving back to us. So, so uh, definitely do not stifle the Holy Spirit. That goes for our adversaries as well as our own people who uh, keep on saying that this isn't true. That, the, that these books aren't ours, this, this information isn't ours, that the, this land is not ours. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what the adversary is attempting to do. You get this quench. Don't stifle the Holy Spirit. The Greek word right there, literally meaning to damp down or restrain. Transferred use to suppress or passively to let die out, fade, wane, disappear. As you saw the example of uh, they're trying to suppress the numbers, suppress what's really going on, suppress how this movement is really growing. That's how they are quenching the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is bring, calling her people back, and they are attempting to suppress that by that prime example that I just showed you earlier. As it talks about right here, now see that these, you know, this information goes exactly, it all goes together. It's a Jacob 5 right here. 564, we'll go towards the, the middle of 64. Actually, let's read all of it. 64 and, 60, and 65. Wherefore, dig about them and prune them and dung them once more for the last time, for the end draweth nigh. So he's giving us that knowledge, understanding. He's, he's raising us back up, giving us what we need to grow, giving us what we need, the nutrients that we need to become a people once again. That's what he's doing. That's what he's been doing. He's got to give us back our knowledge and understanding in order for us to be able to grow and to be able to follow him. So that's what you're talking about right there at the beginning. Wherefore, dig about them and prune them and dung them once more for the last time, for the end draweth nigh. And as you can see, we're growing exponentially. We're in knowledge and understanding, not just myself or Elder Ayul and the other brethren, but the entire nation. What these other nations are, even our own people who attack us don't understand is that we are a true nation of priests, kings, and queens. We're becoming a true nation once again. See, I don't have to have all the answers because I know that the Most High raises up others who if someone says something about something I bring out, they have knowledge and understanding and they're quick to go to battle. I saw that with uh, some of the comments made to some of these people who were talking about the Book of Moore. And I, I love to look at the comments because then I see that our people are quick to battle, quick to defend the truth. It doesn't have to always be myself or Elder Al Yule. I know that our brethren do the same thing. And I've seen that, you know, our people, we have a lot of very intelligent, well-read brothers and sisters out here who uh, definitely go out and fight and to defend the truth, fight for the Most High. So, and it's, and it's a beautiful thing to see us as a nation coming together and working together to defend the Most High through his word against any, any and all adversaries. And so that's the whole thing. We are a, a nation now. We're becoming a nation once again 
of kings, priests, and queens. The queens are definitely coming up and starting to support the, the men again. And as men need to be up, uh, you know, and make sure we stand up and be the leaders that we are supposed to be. As we do that, then, like I said, our nation will become unstoppable once again as we come together. And I'm already seeing the vestiges of that already. So, so I'm going to use some of the information that I got from the other brethren. You know, I said because they're working, they're working diligently as well. They're studying. And then they're quick to uh, go out and definitely bring knowledge and understanding to anyone who wants to step up and, and try to uh, downgrade this, uh, this awakening. So let's continue with 64. And if it be so that these last graphs shall grow and bring forth the natural fruit, well, that's exactly what's happening. We are growing and we're bringing back, bringing forth that natural fruit. We're bringing back that knowledge and understanding. That's exactly what you see happening right now. So if those things are happening, you start to establish those conditions once again. What does it say he's going to do? It says, then ye shall prepare the way for them that they may grow. So again, right, that's really important. If these conditions are set and met, then the Most High is going to do something else. That's when the other shoe drops. And if it be so that these last grafts shall grow and bring forth the natural fruit, then shall ye prepare the way for them that they may grow. So as we fish for the men and the women and they and we begin to grow, as you see, then he's going to prepare the way. Just like it talks about in Jeremiah 16, 16. At first, there's the fishers. Then after the fishers come the hunters. So 65. And as they begin to grow, ye shall clear away the branches, which bring forth bitter fruit. Okay? So the branches that are set up to bring forth bitter fruit, to continue that church doctrine, they will be removed. That's exactly what this is talking about. And this goes hand in hand with what it talks about in Jeremiah 16 and 16. Might be said a different way, but it's the same. So now as we bring back the book of Moore and start to connect it to the Bible, and you realize that, you know, these are connecting People are going to be are, are going to be used to try to uh, diminish this knowledge and diminish these connections. They'll say things like, uh, "Well, the book a uh, Book of Mormon isn't mentioned in the Bible." Well, of course they're going to change names, and not only that, the um, Bible is primarily a Southern Kingdom book, so it's not going to necessarily have all of the names of many of the Northern Kingdom because they were separated. And they go by different names. People change their names and things like that all the time. But but the Book of Mormon might not be, or Mormon might not be actually in the Bible. But this brother right here, this Ajuda shows you right here that the word Nephi is. I thought Nephi wasn't in the Bible or the Apocrypha, but the Book of Mor is ours. This brother actually, you know, like I said, goes right there. Look it up yourself. Look at these verses yourself. Look this information up for yourself. Don't take a man's opinion. See, that's what we, happens when we were in the church. We took people's opinions. They would just tell us this is bad, and we would just believe them. Go research for yourself. This is why I said that we are at a nation of kings and priests. I didn't have to say anything, but the most I put it on this brother's spirit to go out and take care of this. You see how this works. This is why I said we're becoming a nation again. And that's what this, uh, the whole world is definitely afraid of. Us actually, instead of backbiting and destroying each other and fighting all the time, we are quick to come to our brother's aid. We are quick to come to our brother's needs you know, and our sisters. You know, We are quick to work with each other in order to actually do the work of the Most High. And that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing, coming together to support our brothers and our sisters, I said, because uh, that's what is necessary for us to become a true nation of kings, priests, and queens once again. So look this information up yourself. Like I said, the most I was putting it back, putting the spirit back in us to search for things, to get more knowledge, understanding, to get more clarity. It's not all about, hey, I'm going to be on top. I want you guys all to listen to me. I'm the only one that has this knowledge and understanding. I want you to follow me. Don't listen to what other people say. 
I tell people all the time, listen to what the Ruach says. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says. She's the one that's going to, has been sent here to guide us. And that's exactly what she's doing now. And it's easy to see how the other nations are now trying to stifle this awakening. They definitely set up roadblocks. And as, as the more I study, the more roadblocks I see how they have set these things up. They have set up other people to set, um, to uh, be us. They set up imitations. And these imitations keep us from following the Ruach, keep us from following the Holy Spirit, because these imitations always set up uh, roadblocks by telling you, don't look at this, don't go here, don't read that, don't listen to this person, don't listen to that person. Don't love your brother, hate your brother, love your enemy, love the Gentiles who have been destroying you. That's what all these imitations have been set up to do so that we could never become that nation that we once were, who would be our brother's keepers. That's not, that's how, you know, that's why like it's, it's easy for us to sit here and look sideways at our brothers and our sisters, but then love the enemy whenever he comes around. Because that's how this whole society has been set up. Odes of Solomon again, real quick. And they imitate the beloved and his bride. And they cause the world to err and, cor and corrupt it. And they invite many to the wedding feast and allow them to drink the wine of their intoxication. So they created a fake power a fake people, and they made the whole world corrupt with that. And they invite everybody. It's universal. You can all come. Catholic. That's what the word means. Universal. And allow them to drink of the wine of their intoxication. So we followed their ways, their religion, their gods. Then, okay, and as we did that, so, so they caused them to vomit up their wisdom and their knowledge. We, vos we vomited up our wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Spirit. And we followed them and it makes us senseless. So we had no direction. And this happened for many, many years, just like in Revelation 11, when our dead body was in the, were in the streets and they were all, everyone else, all the Gentiles were partying. That's exactly what happened because we had no, uh, we did not have any knowledge, understanding. We did not have the Holy Spirit. And that allowed them to be able to uh, elevate themselves and enjoy themselves and keep us at the bottom. But now that the Most High has sent the Holy Spirit back, they're trying to quit, um, to quench that as well, or to stifle the Holy Spirit, but it's not going to work. All right. This is the, then they abandoned them. So they killed us off. And then we were those dead bodies for those three and a half days. That's how they abandoned us. And so they stumble about like mad and corrupted men. And that's exactly what we were zombies out there. Since there is no understanding in them, neither do they seek it. So yeah, that's how it was. We, there was no understanding in us and we weren't seeking anything either. Right? Don't look at this. Don't read that. Don't go there. Don't listen to this person. Don't listen to that person. That's how we didn't seek anything. So that part again, since there is no understanding in them, neither do they seek it. So anybody who did try to seek anything, they cut those people off real quick. They got rid of them real quick because they don't want us to look and search for our power, for our understanding. Right? It says, but I have made wise. I have been made wise so as not to fall into the hands of the deceivers. And I may myself rejoice because the truth had gone with me. So as you awaken, you know, we have been made wise so that we will not fall into the hands of the deceivers. And that's exactly what you're seeing right now. The Most High is calling his people back so that they can be made wise so they will not fall into the hands of the deceivers anymore. Okay. And let's keep on going. He says, and I myself rejoice because the truth had gone with me. For I was established and lived and was saved. And my foundations were laid on account of the Lord's hand because he has planted me. And that goes back also to that joke, Jacob 5. And how you know, we were plants. And that he had to uh, dung us again, dig around us, prune us so that we may live once more. Look at the bottom there, it says, for he set the root and watered it and adapted it and blessed it and its fruits will be forever. Wow, I didn't even make that connection until right now. How that connects exactly with Jacob chapter five. He set the root, that goes right back to what he was talking about and watered it 
and adapted it. Let's talk about dunging it and blessing it right there, pruning it. And its fruits will live forever. And those fruits, those um, good fruits will live forever. And the ones who are producing the bad fruits will be destroyed. Now you can see how Odes of Solomon goes, connects exactly with Jacob 5 and the Book of Moore. It is all fits exactly what has happened to our people. Now you start to see why these books are hidden and why they use people that look like us to keep us out of them. So now we get from Ode to Solomon, connects with Jacob chapter 5, which it goes back and connects with Jeremiah 16 and 16. So that's all praises right there to the Most High and the Holy Spirit for giving us this understanding right here. But see, this is how it works. You know, I said, I don't have to study all these things and have everything planned out exactly because sometimes I'll read something and the whole, I asked for the Holy Spirit to give me the words to say before I started this video. And then bam, right there at the bottom of this page makes the connection with Jacob chapter five. This just shows you how we're all led by the Holy Spirit and we are not led by man. And that she makes the connections and brings the understanding together. Now we're going to connect all that to Joel chapter 2. We're going to finish up real quick here. We're going to read Joel chapter 2, start at 16 through 27. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. That says gathering that you're seeing happening right now. Let the priests, the ministers of the Most High, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O power, and give not thine inheritance to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they uh, say among the people, where is their power? And that's exactly what they did took away our knowledge, took away our understanding. Most I have to raise up the priests in order to be able to um, lead our people back to the true worship of the Most High so that these heathen can't be standing over us, gloating over us, you know, and, act, and asking us where's our power while we're, you know, at the bottom, laying prostrate while they uh, live it up and taunt our power. Those days are quickly coming to an end. 18. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. And that's exactly what you're seeing now. So you're seeing all these uh, storms and this destruction happening worldwide because the people are now coming back and asking the Most High for forgiveness. And he's now having pity on the land, for what they've done to our land and to his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. What you heathen don't understand is that you did not get control over us because of something you did, because of your strength. You got control over us because we fell, because our ancestors made horrible decisions. But that uh, is quickly coming to an end. Your reign over us and our land has an expiration date and that date is soon coming to pass 20 but i will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things so there you go. He awakens his people, then he sends out the hunters, and he removes them from our lands. He removes them from our presence, and he, um, he renews our people, and he renews our land. That's exactly what you've just been hearing in Jeremiah, in Jacob, and also in the Odes of Solomon, and now you're hearing it again in Joel 2. Okay? Joel 2, uh, 2 and 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. 
The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, your, uh, your power, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the, la in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Most High your power, that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord, okay, your power, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. You're seeing the beginnings of these prophecies coming to pass every day now. You're seeing the growth of, uh, of this movement. You're seeing the gro growth of this awakening. You're seeing the fact that our, we are growing in knowledge, understanding daily. You see that we are not just dealing with the books, but we're dealing with the spirit that is leading us to understanding of these books, being able to, you know, pretty much chew up the, um, the meat and spit out the bones of them interjecting themselves into all of our books, realizing what's truth and what's a lie. So you other nations, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. If you are being called to this understanding, same with our people and the other nations, I would suggest you hurry up and get on board. Because now, though, like I said, he's most highest sent his spirit, and she is making everything plain, very easy to understand. And she's connecting the dots like never before. So I just wanted to bring that to you. Okay? How you see the stifling happening, or there are attempts to stifle the truth happening. So when people are trying to bring, come up with their, you know, their arguments against these other books, so tell them to make sure they, they hold the Bible to all those exact same standards that they're going to hold the Book of More to. So we can go into many books and make the connections because the story is the same. It's nothing, it's not something new. It's a, it's a process that's been repeating over and over and over again. So I'm still going to keep putting up videos as long as uh, YouTube allows it to happen. But if they move, like I said, against uh, this truth, they are just pretty much attempt making their attempts to stifle and quench the Holy Spirit, which will then open themselves up to curses. Pharaoh tried to do the same thing. Many of our adversaries have tried to do the same thing. None of them was successful. And they will not be successful again this time as well. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who was wisdom, who was the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.